Welcome to Good News Heroes on Unite Radio. I'm Jenna. Last time on Good News Heroes, Amy Carmichael served God in her own country, then became a missionary to Japan. But sickness caused her to leave, and that made her so sad. It seems like God is telling Amy no a lot. Where was God going to bring her next? Let's tune in with Piper and Logan to find out. Oh, hey, Logan, what are you doing up this late? I couldn't sleep. I'm sorry I was rude before I left for soccer. Will you forgive me? Of course. You know I will love you, no matter what, right? Yeah. Even if how you love me doesn't make sense right away, I know you love me. Sounds like you've had a lot of time to think about it. Yeah, I did. And Uncle Mike started telling us about a good news hero who heard no a lot. She had to trust God with it, and it helped me think about our soccer problem. Gotcha. Well, hopefully one day you'll be able to see how this will be for your good. I think I will. Hmm. Someday. (laughs) Sounds good. Now I'm exhausted. It's time for bed. Hey, Uncle Mike. Oh, hey, Piper. Hi! Hey, Logan. What are you doing here? Uncle Mike's been picking me up from soccer since it's on his way home from work. But why are you here, Piper? I thought you were home already. I asked Uncle Mike to pick me up on the way to pick you up. That way we can hear more about Amy Carmichael. You're a genius. Thanks, Uncle Mike. What happened next to Amy? Did she get any answers at home? Not right away, but God did some great things through Amy while she was at home. For example, when Amy told stories about her missionary adventures to a family friend, He suggested that she write a book about it so that everyone could read her story. So Amy gathered all the letters she wrote during her time in Japan and turned them into a book. She called the book From Sunrise Land, and it was a huge success. Amy was thankful for that, but was also excited to know what her next step would be. God sent the answer through another missionary friend of hers. One of her friends was a nurse at a hospital in India. At Ida Scudder's hospital? No, not Ida's hospital. It didn't exist yet. But this friend worked in India as a missionary nurse. She told Amy that the city where she lived, Bangalore, had good weather that might be better for Amy's health. She asked Amy if she would consider joining her missions organization to become a missionary in India. Amy prayed about it and felt like God was telling her to go. So Amy sailed for India in November 1895. Was her health better in India? It was. Amy still got sick every once in a while, but it was never bad enough that she had to leave India. Soon she made friends with other local missionaries and local Indian Christian women. Amy and her friends started a small traveling group they called the Starry Cluster, after a verse in the Bible that talks about how people who lead others to righteousness will shine like stars. That's the perfect name! The starry cluster thought so too. Amy was excited to get right to work, but she felt like there was something in her way. To solve this problem, she wanted to do something no other missionary in India had done before. Well, how do I look, Muriel? The white sari almost makes you look like you always lived in India. From the back, and when your head is covered, it's hard to tell that you're Irish. Oh, good. Amy, are you sure that you want to do this? No other missionary here dresses the way we do. Aren't you afraid of what the other missionaries will think of you? I don't care what they think. I learned a long time ago that I must obey what God tells me instead of what the other missionaries say. I dressed in Japanese clothing while I was in Japan, and it was a blessing to me and my work. The clothes there and here are far more comfortable than my old ones. And I've learned that the people trust me more when I wear what they wear, eat what they eat, and live as they live. When I did this, the people in Japan were welcoming, and I learned the language faster. I want to do the same here so I can build friendships, learn the local language, and tell people here about Jesus. Very well, Amy. I certainly think that your plan will work. And you know, God has given you another advantage in this plan. Oh, he has? Please tell me. I don't think I've noticed. Your brown eyes. 
If you had blue or green eyes, like many white women do, you wouldn't blend in with the people as easily. Really? I can't believe it! Oh, but it's true! Almost everyone here has dark eyes. No, no, sorry, Muriel. Your observation just made me realize something else. Oh, what is it? When I was a little girl, I hated my brown eyes. I thought they were ugly, and I wanted blue eyes just like my mother's. I prayed and asked God to change my eyes to blue, and when he didn't, I was so sad. But I learned that God still heard my prayer, and that sometimes he tells us no. Now I understand why he told me no all those years ago. He gave me these brown eyes on purpose so I could better serve him in India. This must be where God planned for you to come from the beginning. I'm glad he's so much wiser than us. So am I. Now, let's go to the market with the rest of the starry cluster and tell more people about God. Make way, make way! Do not slow us down on the way to the temple, or the gods will be angry. Muriel, what is that? Best keep away from them, Amy. Why? What is it? Muriel, why are those little girls in the cart? And why do they look so sad? They are temple children. Temple children? What does that mean? It means they are prisoners. They have been given to the temple to serve the false gods of Hinduism, India's main religion. You see those wreaths of white flowers on their heads and how they are dressed in purple silk and gold jewelry? That is how they dress the temple girls. They belong to the gods now. But they're so young. They can't be older than 10 years old. What will happen to them in the temple? They will become slaves to the priests and serve the false gods for the rest of their lives. Some of them will even be married to the gods. That is why they cry. They do not know exactly what will happen to them, but they know it's not good. Everyone knows that the priests and temple workers are abusive and cruel to the children. How could they? If everyone knows how terrible the temple is for these girls, why would any loving parent give their children over to such a life? If a Hindu family is too poor or too many bad things happen to them, they'll sell a daughter to the temple in hopes that the gods will see their sacrifice and help them. Those poor girls. Muriel, we must do something to rescue them. God must hate how poorly these precious children are treated. He loves everyone, especially the little children. I wish we could do something, but once they go into the temple, they never leave. Legally, they belong to the temple forever. There must be something we can do. Lord Jesus, please, give us a way to help these poor girls. Was the temple really that bad? Sadly, yes. But no one saw anything wrong with it because it was part of their religion. They didn't know God and how much he loves kids. This must have been why God gave Amy brown eyes. So she can be a missionary to India and rescue the girls. They must have hated living in the temple. I bet they would have run away if they could have. Actually, one night, one of the girls did run away. Really? Who? Her name was Prina. When she was seven years old, her father died. Out of desperation for the gods' blessings, Prina's mother gave her to the temple. Prina hated the temple. The workers were mean and the statues of the false gods scared her. One night, she noticed that the temple gates were open and she didn't see anyone looking. So she took a chance and ran. She ran the whole 20 miles back to her mother's house. Mother, mother! Prina, what are you doing here? How did you get here? I'm home now, mother. I ran away. Ran away? How could you? But mother, I hate it in the temple. The temple women are mean to me. They hurt me. They said I will be married to the gods, but I don't want to. I want to come home. Please let me stay. They promise I'll be good. There you are. Ah! How dare you run away? You thought we wouldn't notice, didn't you? Go away. I'm home now. Right, mother? Please don't make me go back. Prina, I... You cannot take her back now. You gave her to the gods, remember? 
How else will you survive after your husband's death? If you take her back now, you will suffer the gods' anger and wrath. Mother, please! I'm sorry, my daughter. I have no choice. You must go back. No, please! Mother, no! I'm sorry, Prina. I'm so sorry. <laughs> How dare you run away from your duty to the gods? You'll learn a lesson you'll never forget. I hate it here. Why can't I go home? You belong to the gods now, child. Soon you will be married to them and belong to them forever. You should be grateful. Do you know what dangers lie outside the safety of the temple? What? Child stealing animals. There is a white woman who dresses like us, but she is not one of us. She is a foreigner, an outsider. She travels around our village with other Indian women she has tricked into helping her. They call themselves the Starry Cluster. They teach about their God and about a savior called Jesus. But that is how they trick people into thinking they're harmless. When the white woman has a child where she wants them, she catches them and they are never seen again. If you run away again, she will surely find you and catch you. You are lucky we found you before she did. You just think about that. Stay here in front of the gods and beg their forgiveness. <laughs> Please, just let me die. I don't want to live anymore. Just let me die. But you can't help me. You're not even real. Everyone says you are, but I know you're not. <laughs> Anything is better than this. It has to be. What about the foreign woman? The temple woman says she is a Chaucer. But the temple woman is a liar. Maybe the Chaucer snatches them away from the temple. Maybe when she catches them, she takes them to a safe place. The next time I can escape, I'm going to find her. Amy would love to rescue Prina, and Prina could help her rescue other temple girls. But how would she find Amy? She didn't even know where Amy lived, and Amy doesn't even know Prina exists. You know, I would love to tell you that next time we're home. No! no! Will Prina be able to find Amy? Tune in next time to Good News Heroes to find out. While you're waiting, check out our video content on Unite TV. It has lots of free videos just for you. Check out the link in the description for more.